Here we are asked to take a polynomial function, y equals x cubed plus 15 halves x squared plus 12x plus 5, and find all intervals on which the function increases and decreases, and to find all local maxima and local minima. So, our first step will be to take the first derivative, because we know that when y prime is greater than 0, our function increases. And when y prime is less than 0, our function decreases. So using the power rule, y prime is equal to 3x squared plus 15x plus 12. The only places where our function's derivative could go from positive to negative or negative to positive is places where its derivative is undefined or it is 0. Well, first of all, y prime is never undefined because this is another polynomial function. So we'll just look and see when it equals 0. Well, first thing we can do to figure that out is factor out the 3. 3 times x squared plus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. A little more basic factoring, and we get 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. Then we can use the zero product property and set each piece of it equal to zero, because if one piece of it equals zero, then the whole thing must. Well, three never equals zero, so we can ignore that one. But x plus four equals zero when x equals negative four, and x plus one equals zero when x equals negative one. So those are the two locations where our derivative could go from positive to negative or negative to positive. The only way to tell for sure is putting them on a sign chart or we could use the second derivative test. So we'll do the sign chart first, and then we'll look at the second derivative test. So we'll put negative 4 and negative 1 on a number line, and choose a value, first off, that's greater than negative 1. So something like 0, for example. If I plug in 0 to my derivative, each of these three terms is positive. This one's 3, this one's 4, and this one's 1. All positive numbers being multiplied together results in a positive. So our function must be increasing because its derivative is positive on that interval. If we plug in something between negative 4 and negative 1, like negative 2, we have a positive times a positive, negative 2 plus 4 is positive, and a negative, negative 2 plus 1 is negative. So our function decreases on that interval. If we plug in something less than negative 4, like negative 100, we end up with a positive times a negative times a negative which a positive times two negatives gives us a positive. And we know that our function is increasing on that interval. So we're ready to write the intervals on which our function increases. It increases from negative infinity to negative 4. Union negative 1 to infinity. And it decreases from negative 4 to negative 1. It may seem a little bit counterintuitive to put brackets indicating that these are closed intervals for our increasing and decreasing intervals, but that's the way the College Board likes it for the AP test, so that's what we're going to stick with for now. Now we can clearly see that a local max occurs at x equals negative 4, and a local min occurs at x equals negative 1. So we can figure out exactly what those values are or what the local max is by plugging in f of negative 4. I'll save you guys the arithmetic. If you plug in negative 4 to your original function, you end up getting 13. And we can get our local min by plugging in negative 1. Once again, I'll try to help you out and save you the arithmetic. That one comes out to be negative 1 half. So we have a local max of 13 at x equals negative 4. And we have a local min of negative 1 half at x equals negative 1. We could have also shown that we had a local max at negative 4 and a local min at negative 1 by using a second derivative test. So we'll do that really quickly just to to show that it gives us the same result. So our second derivative is 6x plus
plus 15, once again using the power rule. If we take the x value at which we have a, our, at which our derivative is equal to 0, so negative 4, and plug that in, y double prime of negative 4 is equal to negative 24 plus 15, which is less than 0. The second derivative tells us, or the second derivative test tells us that if at a critical value where our derivative is 0, the second derivative is negative, we have a max, and that's exactly what we got at x equals negative 4, a local max. y double prime of negative 1 is equal to negative 6 plus 15. Well, negative 6 plus 15 is greater than 0, and that tells us that we have a local minimum there. So we got two different ways to show the exact same thing.